Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles today, I want to preach out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I, I want to preach a sermon called Soldiers of the Cross. And I, I, I cannot emphasize enough, saints, that if you multiply zero times zero, what do you get? Guys, you guys that are mathematicians, what's zero times zero? Zero. What's 10,000 zeros times 10,000 zeros? In all reality, unless we add some type of a figure to what we did for God last year, we're going to read the same thing again. Amen? Amen? Listen, folks, I'm not here to tell you things are going to get better, everything's going to go away, things are going to go back to normal. Are you kidding me? Were things better after 9 11? Nope. Were they different? You know what I mean? Everything changed. After AIDS, the disease came out. Everything changed. Now the COVID came out. Everything changes. So my point is this. If we're going to claim to be soldiers of the cross, then we're going to have to be soldiers of the cross. Come on. Come you can't on. multiply soldiers of the cross times zero Amen. and on. get anything else other than zero. Amen? Yeah. Because that zero nullifies the, uh, the figure. I want to. I want. I want you to understand today. There is a, and this, this thing comes to mind because, because we are so out of tune with reality. We are, and because we think that success, spiritual success, physical, financial, material success can only be achieved by the by the the elite. We don't ever make an effort to go beyond what God has done in our lives. Come on. Yeah. How many of you ever heard of Mozart? Anybody here? Yeah. yeah. Come on, raise your hands if Come you've on. heard of Mozart. I know you've heard of him. On, I didn't say you heard. You probably haven't heard his symphonies. Come on. Those beautiful things. But you know who Mozart is. He was a composer. Wasn't he? Sure. Amen. His name was uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. He, he was a great composer in the 1700s, 1759, I believe he was born. And he went on to, to write these great, beautiful symphonies, man, that include every, just about every instrument in the world. And, and, and you know, folks, you got to understand this today. Mozart struggled financially most of his life. Wow. Well, you thought he was a... His entire life, he lived on a rented house. Not that going around, amen? Come on. His dad struggled to find him gigs. Back in the days, you wouldn't go play at the bars. Uh, usually the people that hired you were the, the nobles. And so sometimes the, the queen or the king would request, hey, send me Mozart, and then he would travel. They say Mozart would travel under the most treacherous conditions. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? He didn't travel on a fancy car like yours. Okay, the one you're complaining, oh my God, the devil's got me. <laughs> he would travel on the horrendous conditions, sometimes across to, you know, a whole continent, to go to a certain uh, king or queen's uh, uh, wedding or, or, or something to play as entertainment for them. You know, he started becoming financially more blessed the last year when he lived, his last year. Uh, what am I bringing all this up? Because soldiers of the cross are not supposed to be governed by their surroundings. Mozart had a talent and he knew it. And he was out to bring it out to the world. He sacrificed what he needed to sacrifice. He gave what he needed to give. He invested in his talent and his ability. And I think one of the greatest tragedies of all times in Mozart's life is his final composition. A requiem mass. There was, a, there was this, and his, at the end of his year, the last year, he started this beautiful composition and halfway through it, he died. That was it. How do you finish 
Mozart's masterpiece. Come on. That's impossible. Who knows what it would have been like? And I know people have tried and they've just speculated. And they, but I'm telling you, brother, only Mozart can finish the work of Mozart. Amen. What a tragedy. I believe it's a tragedy. For somebody that's a musician, somebody that's into music, I listen to Mozart. I listen to Beethoven, to Liszt. I listen to these guys. I, I trip out. I hear their music. I hear their instruments all separately. I don't hear music like most people hear music. I hear the different instruments. I mean, it's it's this, this this thing in my head that's just spinning, bouncing all over. As all, it's just... I hear the three notes that make up the chord, and then I hear when they move that first, or that third, or that fifth, or that seventh, and, and oh my God, if you would have only finished it, who knows what it would have been like. As soldiers of the cross, we need to finish our race. Come on. We cannot, Lord Jesus, help me that I not be moved but my surroundings, that I not be de deterred uh, and dissuaded from what I'm supposed to do as a man of God. Lord Jesus, help me that my symphony in my final years will be completed so that I can join the great men of the ranks and say, I fought the good fight, I finished the race, I kept the faith. Hallelujah. I want to read out of 1 Chronicles chapter 12, a uh, great King David's army and and, and they're 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 uh, this is kind of like uh, uh, what do you call it the you know the the, the where all the famous are, are named and numbered and there's this one tribe that stands out. The Bible says of Zebulun there were fifty thousand men who went out to battle. Now they were experts in war with all weapons, stout-hearted men who could keep ranks. Hallelujah. Naphtali, 1,000 captains with uh, 37,000 shield and spear. You notice that it says nothing about their ability to keep rank. Oh, they had spears, they had shields. The Danites could keep battle formation, 28,600. And Asher, those who got out of war, able to keep a battle formation, uh, 40,000. The Reubenites, Gadites, the half tribe of Manasseh, from the other side of the Jordan, 120,000. Armed with battle, uh, armed for battle with every kind of weapon of war. All these men of war could keep ranks. Uh, came to Hebron with a loyal heart to make King David uh, over, uh, make David king over all Israel and all the rest of Israel were of one mind to make David king. Father, bless your word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This tribe of Zebulun stands up. Even though all the same things are said about everybody else, something says it's different. It says they were stout-hearted and they were men that could keep rank. I'm thinking, you know, rank, what does that mean? Well, I'm a sergeant, so I gotta maintain my sergeant rank. I'm an usher, so I gotta maintain the usher rank. I'm a worship team singer, you see, so I gotta keep my, my ministry rank. That's not what it means. You know that word rank? It means they were willing to war. Amen. Come on. There was guys that were experts in every type of weapon, but I mean, I'll go if you tell me to go. If you order me to go, I will go. But not the tribe of Zebulun. They were different breed. They were people that could hold rank. They were soldiers. They were soldiers that they were fought for the king, and they didn't need to be. Encouraged. Come on, come on. They didn't need to be sold on the fact that this year is going to be a better year. They didn't need to be told, look, man, if you if you just uh, go for it, you know, God's going to bless you, blah, blah, blah. They were stout hearted men. They, they were focused. And they were willing to fight. They were ready and they were willing to fight. Just tell me where to go, and I'll go and I'll fight there. I believe that this, this, this one word was placed in there by God Almighty purposely so that we can scrutinize the scripture here and realize anybody can be in an army. Anybody can be an expert in all forms of weaponry and what have you, but not everybody can hold 
ramp. Come on. Come on. I am a soldier of the cross. I don't need to be pampered. I don't need to be encouraged. I don't need to just go forward. I don't I just just I have a willing heart because I keep rank. I know what I'm here to do. You look at Mozart, he didn't need to just be moved. He didn't need the circumstances to be right. He didn't need, well, nobody appreciates my ministry. Come on, I'm not going to write music no more. He didn't care. It's like Jeremiah. Jeremiah was one of the, the, the prophets that had the words, man. And there came a time when Jeremiah said, that's it. I'm not going to speak your words anymore. I'm done. I'm done. I'm so done. I'm just going to quarantine and read my Bible. But as I said these words, he said, how can I keep my mouth shut? For it's like a fire that is shut up in my bones. And therefore, I will profess and I will proclaim saints of God. Being a soldier of the cross it will never be put up for sale. Come on. If it costs the soldiers of the cross their life and their commitment and their faithfulness and their ability to keep rank, it will not be made on sale for us Americans during a quarantine, Come on. during a pandemic, during hard times. Well, times are hard. That's the way it is, man. Yes. We want to believe that Mozart the, he created a symphony and right away it was a one hit wonder he hit the top of the charts he had a, a gold uh, uh, record and so he had sponsors and everything but he traveled under horrendous circumstances he didn't say take no for an answer he didn't take discouragement for an answer he didn't just say whatever he held rank for his calling right, come on. his function yeah. his ability you and I have been called by God Almighty. This one thing I do, I reach forward for that thing that God reached before. I'm trying to accomplish. God saved me for a reason. Therefore, I have to contend. I have to fight. I have to Come push on. myself and push myself and push myself. And at the same time, drag my family with me. And at the same time, drag the unsafe with me. But I cannot let up. Because I am a man or a woman that holds rank. Amen. You know when you reference, you, know, you cross-reference the word rank, it sends you to James, where it says, a double-minded man wow. is unstable in all his ways. Oh, we are ferocious lions in the church. Come on. But God help us the minute we get to our unsaved families. God help us. I'm so glad the holidays are over. And at least I'm saved. Come on. Pathetic. Come on. Tiny. Little man. If your strength fa fails in the day of adversity, then little tiny was your strength. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, we are these ferocious lions. Ooh, and we'll post stuff with power. But have no essence in our homes or at work or at church. If you take the soldier of the cross and you multiply him by a hundred, by zero accomplishments, what do you have? Come on, folks. If you take the soldier of the cross and you multiply it by 10,000 zeros. What do you have? Zero. Zero. Zero accomplishments. So, in all truth, it's not our title that makes us. That's right, come on. It is that we use our weapons. Amen, come on. It's that we stand for the cross. It's that we go forward. Hey, you need to quarantine. Oh my gosh, it's quarantine. Why? Why? What's going on? If you're sick, you need to go home. I tell people to just right. go home. If you're sick, stay home. Yes. 
But they're going to move every single time somebody screams the sky is falling, we're all going to run and hide. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right. Come on. Come on. Let's crawl in a hole and die, saints. Yes. Oh, no. But not the tribe of Zebulun. Because they held rank. You multiplied them by, by, by variables. You didn't multiply them by a zero. Think about what I'm saying, Christian. Do you hold rank? Do I hold rank? Or am I the greatest coward of all? Because I hide behind a pulpit and I challenge you to do what I don't really do. But I dare say, follow me as I follow Christ. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Follow me as I follow Christ. What's up? What is it this time? What is it this time? Come on, say that. Can you imagine a soldier getting horrible news right before the battle and he just leaves? <laughs> come on. Uh, better yet, soldiers are supposed to fight. Yes, sir. Isn't that what we train for? Isn't that what we're about? Your true colors do not come out except in battle. Your true colors will never show. They'll never show in the, in the light of prosperity. Her true colors will always show in the darkness of adversity. Come on. Yeah, well, you know how it is. No, I don't know how it is. I don't know how it is. Memorials become relics if they don't stir up their modern conscience. Memorials, you know, we, we're supposed to mean something, saints of God. We are the soldiers of the cross. You're a teenager in this place. You're a soldier of the cross. You're supposed to mean something. You're supposed to stand for your ground, for your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Why are you calling me Lord? Lord. I never knew you. That, have you ever read that in the Bible? I mean, it is still there, right? Amen. Come on. Revelation 12, chapter 7, verse 9. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought. Brother, that war has been going on forever. Sure. Darkness with light will always be fighting. Children of the light will all be fighting the forces of the world. Yeah. When it's not people that are unsaved trying to attack your life, when it's not that, it's your flesh that you have to fight, when it's not that, it's unsafe family that you have to fight, and they want you to compromise, they want you to be like them, they want you to act like them, and, and once you do, you look like a fool. Saints and brethren, this ought not to be so, because this war rages on. Did you know that another meaning for rank, holding rank, is it means there's no duplicity. That means you're not a two-face. You're somebody in church, and you're not somebody with your unsafe family or at work. Somebody in church. In the battle, what battle? This is glory. This is the glory when we're in church. You know what I you know what I fear more than anything in this church? You know what I fear more than anything in this church? This is the part where you can say what? <laughs> that I can preach my heart out. And it follows you just to the door. Mm, come on. Oh, come on. It does nothing to you. It does nothing to me. You know what I fear? Is that I would preach these sermons. And I will walk out of there and be a different person. Then I will preach God's holy word. It's a holy word. Yes, sir. And I'll do it. I challenge this. That's why Spurgeon said the coward's shield is a pulpit. The coward stands behind the pulpit, challenges the people, and then doesn't do it. He's a coward. What a, what a fear it means, saints of God. Come on. Soldiers of the cross are warlike company. 
They're the defense. They said they attack. We are not to live in the defense. We are to live in the offense. I shared with you a while back when Molly turned nine years old. And I said, how, how is it, Molly, now you're nine? And she says, well, you know, the funny thing is, I don't feel any different. <laughs> so, you know, being a great grandparent that, that you are, you, what do you mean, sweetheart? What do you mean you don't feel different? Well, I, don't, I just don't feel different. I figured at least I'd be a little bit taller. <laughs> How silly. That we would enter a new year. And because the one digit changed, we are taller. I'm different. I'm different. See, I've been, I've been like really, really thinking about it. Soldiers of the cross don't think about it. Soldiers of the cross fight. They contend. Soldiers of the cross read their Bibles and stop making excuses. Come on. Soldiers of the cross get into a Bible reading program. Soldiers of the cross pray and stop excusing uh, uh, slothfulness. Let us get up on the couch of complacency saying, Come on. You're going to take everything that happens this year, multiply it by zero, and you will have what you had last year. Come on. Oh, may God help us. May God help us. The Bible says that Moses, he refused once he came of age. Did you hear that? He put up with it. Well, you know, I, I put up with Pharaoh, put up with uh, his stepmom and their, and their insanities. He put up with it. One became of age, the Bible says. He refused to be called Pharaoh's uh, daughter's son. And he refused to indulge in the pleasures of sin. Right? Yes. That are passing away. Hallelujah. Come on. You ever notice when Moses killed that guy? What was he doing in a slave camp? What was he doing there? He's one of the highest people in all of Egypt. Yeah. He says, I don't belong there. I belong here. Yes. I belong in the heat of the battle. I belong where things are happening. Hallelujah. I belong where things are really happening. Question today is to be or not to be. Isn't it true? To be a soldier of the cross or not to be. Are we so cold? Are we so hard? That God can no longer touch our hearts or challenge our hearts. Yeah. You know, nowadays you can't tell people nothing. Come on, come on. Serious, you, your own kids, they're like, how dare you? Do you know who I am? <laughs> Funny, huh? And it's come down to that, that it has infiltrated the, the unit of the family. To mm. think about it, this is not just some, I have a bad thing for this, is from hell. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's an assault on the family unit. Yeah. God designed it like that. That's why you gotta have a man or a woman so they can produce a baby. And that baby be taught the ways of God, instructed the ways of God, and that child will rise up. And when you put different genders, they're not compatible to God's unit. Come on. God's unit, the family, is important and precious to God. Yeah. And the enemy has come to a place where people can get offended and they, hey, they can blow up their mouth. They can just ruin people's heart and break their heart. And you don't realize that's an assault on the family unit. Yeah, sure. Amen. That's an assault on God's design. Yeah. To be. Or not to be? That is the question. That is the, the play from, from uh, Shakespeare, right? We all know that to be or not to be. That is the question. People don't know what that's about, but maybe I'll give you a crash course real quick on, on, on Hamlet. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. This, is, this is a big issue with this guy. He's not just some dork. He's not just some wannabe. He was the son of the king. His son, his uncle poisoned his dad. At least that is what is believed. He poisoned him in the year with poison. And when his dad died, his uncle became king. He should have been the king. But his uncle took over. And it was worse is when his uncle became king. Uncle Claudius became king. His wife said, hey, you want to marry me? 
that, I mean, that, you know, his, his mom said he married the uncle. This is a mess. You've got incest. You've got authority being a usurp. You have a, a coup. You have murder. This is a mess. Christian, please hear me. This is a mess here. And, you know, what a disaster. To the point that Hamlet, he has to fake insanity. He has to pretend like he's crazy because he knows they're going to kill him. He's a rightful uh, a ruler of the, of the throne. By the way, I know you think Disney is all that. But, you know, they say that The Lion King is a remake of Hamlet. Mm -hmm. And when you, read, when you read it, the uncle killed the dad to take over and wants to kill Simba. Simba has to run. Come on. It's, uh, it's Hamlet. Come on. <laughs> wow, come on. So now, here's this guy. Listen to me. This, it's a mess. My mom's a two-timer. She best stabbed me and went my uncle that killed my dad. Now they're trying to kill me because I'm the rightful you know, heir of the throne. Come on. And so he has to feign insanity. I know nowadays that's a popular thing to do when you kill Come someone. Is just able to, there were these voices. <laughs> and so, so now they're trying to see, is he really crazy or is he not crazy? So when you look at, come on folks, stay with me. Yeah, come on. As you look at the, at the play, behind the scenes is, is Claudius and Polonius, his brother. And sitting down on a chair is Ophelia. She's reading. But they already counsel her. They, we need you to pretend like you're busy, but we need you to hear what Hamlet says. If see he's crazy for real, or is he just making it up? And this, this is where the scene takes off. And Hamlet goes in and it's like, my God. To be or not to be. <laughs> to suffer the lashes, to suffer the, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Should I just take it, take it, take it? Or should I take up arms? against the sea of suffering and by opposition end it or should I just rise up like a soldier and handle my business come on to die to sleep no more and by a sleep to end the heartache and the misfortune and the betrayal to end the, the thousand shocks, natural shocks, he says. Wow. To be or not to be. Our families that are not saved are a mess. Our homes are a mess. The church is a mess. The world is a mess. America is a mess. And we sit here wondering. To be or not to be. Yes. Come on. The world is listening to see if these Christians like Ophelia turning the page, pretending to be reading, but they're really looking at you. Or you think, oh, nobody sees. They see. Yes. A sinner sees because they know we need an answer, but they don't have it. Maybe these Christians have it, and they sit there turning the page while Claudius and Polonius, the devil himself, are looking and watching to see your reaction. She's listening to see what you're saying, and we're sitting there talking like madmen to be or not to be. Should I just suffer this outrageous misfortune? Should I rise up, he said. Should I rise up? And by opposition, end it. Or should I die? End it all. Sleep. No more. No more. Maybe if I just roll over and die. Maybe if I just quit the race. Maybe if I just stop contending and fighting and finding a more appeased church where they can just embalm me, you know, with a with love bomb for everything. Find me a place where they can just encourage me and encourage me, and I don't have to do no fighting, and I don't have to be no struggling, and and I I just be prosperous all the time. To be or not to be, Christian soldier of the cross. That is the question. Come on. Yes.
Oh, but not seven of them. Because they could hold rank, brother. They could hold rank. They could hold rank. They were stout hearted. They were they had a heart of, of steel, man. And they were ready to contend. They were ready to fight. They were ready, man. They, as a matter of fact, did you know the characteristics of a true soldier is that he gets bummed out when he can't fight? Amen. A true soldier is upset when the mission is scrubbed. A true soldier says, man, this is not what I'm here to do. To hear abort mission. Drop it. Zebulun was like that, man. They were, they were at another level. All the other guys had skills. They were skilled in all the arts of all the, the weapons of this, this, and that. Oh, but these people, brother, they, they were different. God had to just throw that in and mess us up, didn't he? Why can't we just be skilled with the worship? Well, I'm a skilled singer. I'm a skilled musician. I'm a skilled uh, media person. I'm a skilled video box, video box recorder or whatever you want to say. It's <laughs> like consola. Why do you have to say they were willing to fight? They were dying to help. They were desperate to fight. Christian, please, if God cannot move us to fight in this new year, we might as well just call it quits. Go find a mountain where we can be off the beat, you know, beaten path. Uh, we can live off the grid, reading our Bibles, waiting for Jesus to come back. But God saved you, and He called you with a holy calling, not according to your work, but according to her, His purpose. He has goals, He has skills and talents and abilities that He has given every believer. What a waste of a testimony of a soldier that has said all oh, these scars and says, "Hey, I, I can, I can do this." Oh no, I'm just gonna go back to be or not to be. That is the question. Saints of God, soldiers of the cross, have we become so like the world that His Word no longer moves us? We'd rather play in our phones Come on. while the, the crazy part of the sermon passes. Come on. Come on. And if, why I, when I repeat stories of illustrations, they're for the sake of people that are watching that haven't heard them. I am not seen out. Come on. Oh, sir. Come on. Okay. Oh. Maybe at home, a little bit. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. You're anointed. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> My only fan. <laughs> Pastor, do you know Doc goes with Jesus? He said, I don't have Alzheimer's. I have Alzheimer's. <laughs> Forget everything he says. But you know what? This great historian of our time, he said John Adams, President John Adams, he went to Harvard University. Thomas Jefferson went to William and Mary, that's in Virginia. George Washington went to war. War made George Washington. War made right. soldiers of the cross. Yes, not our education, not our skilled talents and abilities. War is when you sit there, you're a teenager, and you're with your friends, and they start smoking weed, or they stop doing bad things. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? This is what makes you a man. We say, hey, I'm out of here. Hey, why? You little whip, you little wuss, you little this. You know, when I lived in the project, I had to go from one corner to the other corner of the project. I, the bus would pick me up here, and I lived in the other corner. And then there was a hill. And all the chorros were there. And all the veteranos were there. And I had to go through the thing all the time, hearing the same insults, the same put-downs. Hey, hallelujah! Hey, you know, come pray for me. Hey, come preach. They would say, come and predict to me. They're idiots. <laughs> they didn't ask to preach. Say, come and predict to me. I would look at them like, ugh. <laughs> you know, I was walking over there with my Bible. And, you know, I, it was like the walk of shame every time. <laughs> but that's what makes soldiers. Yes, yes sir. Not compromise with my unsafe right. friends, oh, my unsafe God. family, unsafe relatives, oh, unsafe. That's what makes a soldier, man. Yes, man. Well, I'm just going to let my light shine. What light? <laughs> Come on. What light? Come on. What light? Come on. If I sit in a group, they're all drinking, 
And I just don't say nothing. My light's not shining, but the minute it's, hey, guys, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're enjoying your beers. Yeah, let me tell you about Jesus. Come on. Amen. Hey, let me share my testimony. It's okay if I share you guys my story. Yeah, you know, that, that light is shining, brother. Yes. Yep. But your light don't shine. Come on. Don't call yourself a soldier of the cross unless you've been in the heat of battle. The great George Washington, we know he was, he was forged in fire. He was forged in this, in this, in the heat of battle. Yeah. You, you know, we watch that program, Forged in Fire. You heat up the metal so much and you press it so hard, you can get as many layers of metal as you want, and you make it red hot, 600 degrees out of the auto, no, something like that, and you press it so hard that all those pieces become one. Sure. It is literally forged, forged in fire. That's what a Christian does. That's what the tribe of Zebulun was. They had been forged in fire. David was a man forged in fire. Paul was a man forged in fire. You and I, we are to be men and women of God, forged in fire. Not everybody, every time somebody screams, the sky is falling, the sky, oh my God, can't go to church, oh my God, we can't do this, oh my God, what are we going to do, Pastor, should we shut it down? Come on, come on. <laughs> oh. You know, I was, I was telling my wife yesterday, I said, babe, you know what's funny? I said, I understand we gotta wear a mask. I, I get it. I'm not against that. I'm not a uh, I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a mask Nazi, okay? I'm not I mean, you can wear your mask, I wear a mask all day long. I go to the store, I go to wherever, I wear my mask, okay? We wear it here sometimes. And I said, you know what? People try to push back and I said, no, 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 we need to wear a mask. We have this important. I agree. I agree. I'm I'm wearing by wearing my mask, I'm protecting you. By you wearing your mask, you're protecting me. All right, that's, that's the way it works. But then they said, hey, we think, we think it may be airborne. <laughs> and people say, oh, heck no. <laughs> Dr. Fauci, you going down. <laughs> and people pushed back, and then they pulled back. Uh -huh. Come on. And then they said, eventually we're going to have to start wearing face shields. Oh, no, oh, heck no. People pushed back. And the entire world pulled back. Yes, sir. We, the people of God, cannot be told how to serve our Lord. Come on, come on, right We're there. We're soldiers of the cross. Don't tell me that that not to fight like that. Come on. I'm from the projects, bro. Yes. Come on. I throw dirt in your eyes. Oh yeah. I scratch you. I did everything. Yeah. I, I was a puma. <laughs> I didn't fight fair. Who fights fair in the streets? I'll bite your ear, I'll, I'll scratch your eyes, I'll, I'll, I'll grab your chin, I'll stick my thumb in your, and pull your ear. Your, your, it's dirty, bro. Kick his, they kick his knee in. Kick it in. Kick it in. First shot. And then, we serve in the Lord Jesus Christ, and a pandemic takes place, and all of a sudden, it's, hey, you Christians can't do that. Come on. Hey, Come on. hey, your boss is, hey, we think there may be a point. Oh my gosh. Come on. I'm telling you, saints, we cannot be soldiers of the cross and submitting to every ordinance of the enemy, not of our country. Listen to that. I'm talking about the devil. I'm talking about him. Not once the Bible is intimidated by our adversary. Yeah. Come on. The Bible says, rise up. You should be intimidated. Fight the good fight. Finish the race. Keep the faith. Zebulun, they were, they were people who held rank, man. They were double-minded. One day they're on fire. The other day, well, you know, there's a pandemic. One day they want to take the world for Jesus. And the other day, my unsafe husband is saying that I need to take it easy. Well, one day, they, they, they're, they're in for God. They're ministering for Jesus. And the other time, well, in my school, they're, they're, they're bullying me that I'm a Christian. Come on, push back. On Zoom? <laughs> you know, Molly got in trouble for talking on Zoom. <laughs> what is this world coming to say? Oh. When the people of God, the soldiers of the cross, are not stout hearted, they don't hold rank anymore. And I got offended. And when you said offended me, come on. Does this offend you? Said Jesus. Does this offend you? Mm -hmm. 
Master, did you know that by saying the things you said, you offended the Pharisees and you also offended us? Oh, scribes, you too? You want to be in the rules? Come on. Let me tell you what you guys are about. Pharisees and Sadducees and everyone was offended. And the great multitude to stop following Christ because they were offended. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. Ah, this is hard doctrine. This who can who can digest such a thing? This is extremism. And they left. And you know what Jesus said to the twelve that were left? Are you gonna go to? Come on. He says, Where are we gonna go? You have the words that need to eternal life. Come on, Jesus. We ain't like them, man. That's right. We ain't punks like that. You know, we're with you, we're down with you, we'll die with you, Lord. We'll stand our ground. We'll believe who you who you, you've called us to believe. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm gonna close with the story of another soldier. His name was Joseph. We all know that Joseph the dream, all the horrible things he suffered. Amen. Amen. At the end of his life, Isaac, his dad was gonna die. Joseph comes in and so Back in the days, it meant something to be a father. It meant respect. Yes, sir. So when he's dying, his kids are there, and they're not like, oh, I'm sorry about the stupid thing that did. I'm sorry. They're not like that. It was different back in the days. Yeah. Come on. He sat up and started pronouncing blessings on all the kids. Yes, sir. And when he goes to Joseph, and I want us to read it out, Genesis 49, 22, sis. I thought I gave it to you. But can you imagine of all his great accomplishments, Isaac, his greatest one was when he sat up there. You may even see a glow in his face. Yeah. He's ready to go to heaven. He's, he's, he's fought a good fight, man. And then he says, he comes to Joseph, the one that had the worst rap of all his kids, right? The one that, he did everything right, but everything went wrong for him. He had got accused of the worst things. He was in prison. He was in, sold as his slaves, his brothers. I mean, Boy, about them. It went bad for him. And this is what his dad had to say. Joseph is a fruitful bough. A fruitful bough by a mountain. His branches run over the wall. This guy, just even in the worst conditions, he prospered. His archers, he says, they have bitterly gripped him, shot at him, and hated him. But his bow remained in strength. And yes. his arms and his hands were made strong. This is your dad about to die. Give me all this. All right. Come on. So, so you need to tell me somebody knows what I went through? This is like God speaking to a saint. To say, I know, man. I know. He says, by the hands of the mighty Elohim of Jacob, from there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Wow. And then you went, uh, and you that was my part. I had to throw that in. <laughs> but what a way. Reuben, your temper has always gotten you in trouble. Yeah. And you're going to live a messed up life. Judah, damn. And he starts, you know, some people wasn't very friendly, but yeah. that you made my life miserable. <laughs> you had your stupid anger, Reuben. You, that's what he told Reuben, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And he starts naming all of them. But Joseph, brother, he was a soldier. And even in a dungeon, where the second in command of all of Egypt, he still kept the heart of a soldier for God. Yes, thank you, Jesus. And he says, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. You were just wicked, wicked people, but God turned it around for good. The question is this evening, this morning, to be or not to be. To be what? To be a soldier. To be a man of prayer, to be a woman of the word, to be a person of church, to be a person that the greatest army in the face of the earth is God's army. Because we are not just saving a nation or a people. We are saving souls from an eternal damnation and hell that only belongs to the devil and his angels. Yes. It was not made for man. And here God's army is going out there telling people about God, sharing our testimony. How can I not be? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say something. Stir the pot and please start trouble. Come on, come on. You're a soldier of the cross. We cannot be pampered. We cannot always be needing encouragement. We cannot always. We're soldiers of the cross. We are stout-hearted men and women of God. We are men and women that can hold rank. Yeah.
Yes, I Come on. For any of you watching this morning, understand this. Is that we all come from different backgrounds in this church. We all try different things to, to be all that. It didn't work out very good for us. But when Jesus found us lost in our sin, bound, hopeless, he saved us and he gave us the, the glory and the privilege of joining in his ranks. We are not soldiers of the cross. That's what we call ourselves. And what we fight not against flesh and blood. We don't fight with people. We fight against the forces of evil, spiritual forces that want to keep people in drug addiction, witchcraft, homosexuality. We're there to help people be free. Yes. Can we introduce them to our God? Our God sets them free. That's the greatest army on the face of the earth. Even though the, all the armies fight and they're, they're uh, you know, they're, they're, they're loyal and, and they're, they're, they're noble causes, this is the noblest of all. Hamlet, when he said to be or not to be, he says, he says, what is the most noble to the mind, he says, to suffer, and that's where I picked up, but he said, what is more noble to the mind, to just suffer and take it? No. And God doesn't want you to live like that. God doesn't want you to live in fear, insecurity, and worst of all, in bondage. God loves you so much that Jesus took the rap for us. Jesus already did the quarantine time in hell for us. Yes, sir. He already did three days in that, that, that coffin, in that tomb. He already did that time for us. And whatever sins you and I have ever committed or will ever commit, they were charged to Jesus' account. And now the Lord is speaking to you saying it's time. It's time to be free. It's time to start new. It's time to do things right. And I ask you, would you like to accept Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior? If you'd like to accept Jesus and say, man, I'm tired of my life. I want to start a new year, but I don't even know how. This is how you're going to start it. With God on your own. If you would like to accept Jesus, lift up your hand. Um, we'll have somebody pray for you. But if you want to accept Jesus, just repeat this prayer after me with all your heart. Say, Jesus, Jesus, forgive me of all my sin. I'm sorry. I repent. And from this day on, I'll serve you with your help. Holy Spirit, fill me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Friend, hallelujah. If you made that decision, you have joined the ranks of heaven. All your sins are forgiven. All your life has been brand new. You are now in God's kingdom. You are now a child of God. Understand this. We want to help you grow in that. And you can contact us on the, on the church Facebook. We have a phone number. We have an email. Uh, if somebody invited you to watch online, call them, text them, contact them, and say, hey, I accepted Jesus. What do I do next? We want to help you grow and that we want to help you be the person that God's called you to be. Hallelujah. Friend, Christian, this morning, take a soldier of the cross. Take a soldier of the cross. Multiply it by zero accomplishments, and you will have zero. Take a soldier of the cross. And multiply it by zero accomplishments, and you will have nothing. Soldiers are forged in battle. They train, they prepare, but I'm telling you, it's when the bullets start flying come on. that the true colors come out. Come on. God has called you to intercession. There's men, there's women here. You used to be an intercessor. Shame on you, because the gifts of God are irrevocable. That means He never stopped the calling of your intercession. You stop. You're called to preach. I hope you're contending for that. You're called to live for God. You're called to pray and witness to people, witness to family, to be the light, the candle in that place. But it cannot, you cannot be a candle if you make no impact. You have to speak up. Your children, you have to pump the gospel into your kids. Pump, 
flood them with the gospel with your kids, your grandkids, fill them. You have to make a commitment. You gotta make this happen. Saints of the cross to be or not to be. That is the question. Don't come to the soldiers unless you're done with the Lord. Unless you're done with zero accomplishments. And you're like, I'm a more than a conqueror. Why am I producing nothing? Your prayers can touch eternity. Your knowledge of the word can touch a person with hope. Your testimony can set so many people free. Because you're going to point them to the one that gave you that testimony. It's time, saints. Soldiers of the cross, to be or not to be. That is the question. Let's all stand. Let's all stand right now. Let's come and find. Come to the soldier. Let's, let's deal with issues in our heart. Let's make some commitments. Let's do what God called us to do. Let's be serious and watch for hallelujah.
you. No, man. That's not the way soldiers are forced. Zebulun wasn't pushed into battle. They couldn't wait to go to battle. They were stout hearted. They are hard as steel. Oh, oh. This isn't changing no more. I'm here to war. I'm a soldier. Yes. I trained all this time for such a time as this. We have been brought into the kingdom of God for such a time as this. To hold rank, to hold rank, and to hold rank. Whether it be in church, at work, at school, with family that's not saved, we are to hold rank. We are the soldiers of the cross. Hallelujah. Lord bless you, faith. Saints, we thank you for being here. We appreciate you all. We thank you that are watching. We hope you felt the presence of God. And I believe that this message will encourage you to keep fighting for your family that's not saved. Keep fighting for the cross. To live clean. Do the right thing. Push forward the kingdom of God. We have been called to advance the cause of Christ. And we cannot do it every time some little uh, a thorn or thistle. Come on. Gets into our shoe or gets into our hand or somebody says, hey, no, stop. Hey, you can't do it. We got we to gotta do things right. We got to wear a mask. We got we to gotta take all the precautions we got to take. But after that, it's up to God. That's where prayer comes in. That's where faith in the power of the blood comes in. That's where we can look at people and say, man, you can't live in fear like that, bro. Let me pray for you. Let me strengthen you with my prayer. The knowledge of the word brings direction to God's people. Right. It saves the soul. Come on, soldier. Yes, if you take zero accomplishments and multiply them with a soldier of the cross, you will have zero. Amen. Don't kid yourself. Because God wants us neither hot, he doesn't want us hot or cold. But you don't want to do the one. Yes. Don't tell me. Yes, don't tell me. You're with me, God said. Moses told Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh, Moses, we'll go and we'll fight with you when we cross the river, but we'll stay in the back. We'll fight, we promise. Just let us build cities for our families and livestock, and then we'll go fight with you guys. And Moses said, what? All right. God's a witness. And if you don't do it, your sin will find you out. Remember, this is not about sin of adultery or, or this, that. He's talking about, don't tell me that you're fighting and you hide every time the arrows start flying. Come on. He says, because your sin of a failed warrior will find you out. Yes. I don't think that's them. none of us, folks. we got to stand the ground as Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit to help us. Amen. 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 We bless you. We thank you for being, uh, being here with us. We thank you that are watching online. Le damos gracias a todas las hermandades de habla hispana. Le agradecemos, lo apreciamos. Sigan adelante. Inviten gente a nuestros servicios también. Lord bless you folks. Everybody raise your right hand. I'm going to speak a blessing on you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak a blessing upon every man, woman, and child in this space. I speak strength. I speak, Lord, zeal. And I speak Jesus' fire upon everyone. Prosperity and blessing upon everyone in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Folks, before we end it, hold on. You can leave the music. I forgot to read something that's very important. Every once in a while, almost every week, Pastor Rick Mary texts me an encouraging message. And today he just happened to text me this, so I got to read it to you. Yes, Are you guys listening? Yes. Yeah, come on. It says, Blessings to you, Brother Alex. Your strength has been renewed for revival. Yes. Your mind has been made a weapon against the enemy. Yes, sir. None of his strategies will succeed against you. Your heart has been fortified from past hurts. And, sustain, and sustain, being, have been sustained and sustained in God's love to move boldly in this new year. So expect the miraculous in everything. Prepare yourself for the hand of God to blow your mind. He's already paved the way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Rick Harris. And that word is for every one of us. God bless you. Have a blessed Sunday. Kick some devil butt for crying out loud. Amen.